The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Type Bond. All right, today I've got something that I hope will be fun, uh, definitely different. We're gonna start here in the office, so that's obviously different. I need to make an adjustment to my keyboard setup, and I've been kind of frustrated with this because my keyboard is an Apple keyboard. They're very, very flat, very thin, and I try to get a fairly ergonomic approach to typing if I can, and I don't find this comfortable. So first of all, I don't find it comfortable on a flat surface. Then I add a very thin wrist rest, if it gets too thick, then it feels awkward. So this thin one still kind of pushes me a little bit too high. And what I've realized is I kind of need to raise the keyboard up slightly. There are products on the market that do this, but they can be very expensive. There's a company called Grovemade that makes amazing accessories for the desk, but holy smokes, are they expensive. So the keyboard tray, I think is 110 bucks. And then the wrist rest they make is another $100. So I just thought, well, it's a Friday afternoon. I'm kind of taking it easy today. Maybe we'll just knock this thing out uh, and see you know, what it takes to make it. So that's what this is. It's more uh, of a bit of a journey that I'm taking you on with me because I'm no CNC expert and I know you could do you know, pretty much all of this on the CNC, but I'm learning. I'm still learning as I go. So I tend to use the CNC for the things I know how to do and then pick up with the woodworking side of things with my traditional tools uh, to finish it off. And that's kind of how I'm gonna approach this. So maybe not as instructional as my you know, typical projects are, um, but I thought it would be more fun to film this experience and show you guys than to just kind of do it and not document it at all. So thing I need to do first is get some measurements from the keyboard. All right, this really shouldn't be too bad. Let's just see what the total length is. Oh, interesting. I would have thought they would have ended up with something either metric or not an even number, but that is an exact 11 inches. Now, the good thing about this dimension, the width, is I don't necessarily want this thing to be completely encapsulated. Number one, it would make it hard to get out of the tray. Uh, the other thing is I've got controls on the back here, the on off switch and then the uh, place where you charge it. So um, I actually want this thing to hang out the back slightly. So I can just maybe take a measurement here, probably right before this round over or the, the rounded corner begins, I want this thing to stop before that rounded corner. That looks like about four inches or so. Oops. Yeah, I think four, maybe four and an eighth. That could be variable. I think we could finesse that later, but that looks pretty good. And then, um, you know, just as an idea, I think I'm gonna wanna know my maximum depth, which will not be here, because this is tapered, right? So I want my maximum depth, uh, not back by the circle here, but where I'm actually gonna stop. And let's see what that turns out to be. And it's roughly uh, one, two, three eighths of an inch. Now I basically just took that information into SketchUp. I'm not gonna bore you with watching SketchUp, but that's the rough profile that I need. I've got those rounded corners. I estimated those to be a three eighths radius round here. So it's a three quarter inch diameter circle at those front corners and the back will just keep going straight, right? Because the keyboard's gonna hang off the back. I'm just gonna use this information to help me make the cutout on the CNC. So I'll just pull this over into VCarve. And in VCarve, there we go. Boy, this is gonna be pretty straightforward. So all I have to do now is decide on the tool path here. And I've got enough of a border, right, for my solid wood to be around the outside. And this is what I was saying before. I could totally use the CNC to cut the full outside dimension, then the cutout in the center. I could do all that on the CNC, but I'm still learning. This would be a good thing for me to practice later, but right now I just want a keyboard tray. <laughs> so I'm gonna do what I gotta do. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So I could take that file out to the CNC, but I've got a little bit of wood prep to do first. Now the material I have to choose from, I've got some options here. Um, you know, there's just some straight grain walnut scrap that I have, but I also have a lot of, um, you know, these small weird pieces of crotch, uh, sort of quilted figure that's absolutely beautiful, but the boards are just wild. So this is a board that I find very difficult to incorporate into any other kind of structural project. So I keep these around for special projects, things like veneer, stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I'm using it for this. Let's do it. So I'm just gonna roughly trace around here so I could see what I'm aiming for. I'm gonna have to take a straight line. I mean, this thing takes a, a kick to the side here, so this should work out nicely. And there's my actual rough cut line. And if I don't have enough material, which I don't think I'm going to, I do have this small off cut, which I can use now for the wrist rest. Given how small this piece is, I don't have much room to play. So I am going to use double stick tape here. 
instead of clamps. I might be able to squeeze a couple clamps in here anyway, just in the edge. You really can't be too careful when you're immobilizing something like this, but whatever. So zero out here. And while I'd love to show you a bunch of boring CNC footage, uh, dust collection is important to me, so I'm going to be putting this big boy on there, and you won't be able to see much. See what we got here. Oh man, <laughs> that's pretty cool. All right, so let's see how we did on the fit. That's pretty darn good. There's like no wiggle room and it's not too tight. Yeah, so we still need to remove this back portion, right? Cause it's gonna be open in the back, but I might leave that material there because that's gonna help when we create the slope on the top here. You see how thin it is at the front, right? Well, we need to get a slope that starts back here and goes down so that this actually winds up being you know, pretty close to flush with this edge of the keyboard. You can use the planer or drum sander with a piece of material like this underneath as a shim. And then you just kind of send that whole thing through because you can see it sits at an angle. You just have to vary the thickness of this piece to get the result that you want. So kind of, you know, it might be a variable process and you may want to sneak up on it and make adjustments as you go. But this looks like it's going to get us pretty close. I'm just hold it on there with some blue tape. And uh, let's see what happens. And like I said, you can definitely use the planer for something like this, but with this really figured material, it just feels fragile. I see some chip out in some areas. I just want to be careful. I'm going to take my time, sneak down. It's going to take a number of passes to get there, but I think the drum sander is going to be the better way for me to go on this. See how we did here. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. We got a little bit of a lip there, but I, I don't know whether it's better to have it proud, sunken in, dead flush. I mean, considering how rough the adjustment was on uh, that little shim under there, that that's this is fine, <laughs> totally fine. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think we can now move on to the wrist rest. So what I'm thinking for that guy is to have something that's kind of peaked in the middle and slopes down a little bit in the front and slopes down in the back. And that will make it reversible if it needs to be. It will allow me to kind of get the, my palms in the right location, I think. So just a little bit of a, a peak surface. So basically we'll, we'll start a little thicker than this and then have it taper down on both sides to that same height so that they kind of meet flush. All right, so ideally when these come together, we get them meeting pretty close to even. They don't have to be absolutely perfect because generally I probably will separate them a little bit, type like this. So that looks pretty good. Yeah, all right, so let's apply some finish. This is just a hard wax oil. Some oils darken more than others, just kind of depending on what it is, what the nature of it is. This stuff does not darken walnut that much. If I went with something like a pure tongue oil on here, this stuff would turn really, really dark, really dark brown. And I think I'd lose a lot of the subtlety in the grain. So uh, this is an Osmo product that I'm using here. See, it doesn't darken it too much, but there's already so many deep dark streaks in there. I don't, I don't wanna get too nuts with it. And I don't wanna muddy it up.
I'll probably do a total of like two coats on this. Should be good. All right, so just a couple hours of work and I saved myself 210 bucks. Well, technically I didn't because I wasn't gonna buy it anyway, but I think it looks pretty good. In a case like this, something so simple, such a simple form, using a really flashy wood, I think is a great way to kind of showcase this and make it a, a real eye-catching addition to a desk. But the most important thing was the ergonomics for me. And when I've got myself in sort of a neutral position here for typing, my arms are fairly flattened out. And this feels really good. This is a nice natural position, feels very comfortable for me. Worst case scenario, if I need to make a different wrist rest that's a little higher or a little bit lower, I know a guy who can do that. But overall, very happy with this. This was a fun couple hour build. I still gotta take these back into the shop and put that second coat on there, but I think this is enough to, uh, to proceed <laughs> at this point, but pretty excited. It's super cool when you could uh, just make simple things like that for yourself, and obviously I'm at an advantage. I've got a full wood shop to be able to do this stuff, but um, well, that's why you should become a woodworker if you're not. <laughs> it opens some doors. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Happy ergonomic computing, I guess. Dear Matt, how come you stopped returning my texts? Dougie. Dougie. Dougie, did you do that?